Hey everyone, Sykes here. Happy P Fiction Sunday. Today we have episode 15 of Mushuku Tensei, season two. I said that kind of backwards. So we left off with Sophia and Rudius getting married. They had their wedding reception, as we know. And everyone kind of cleared out. Rudius ended up beating Luke in a battle, a one-on-one -on -one duel, and it wasn't even close. Now, anyway, at the point of this story, it can go in so many different directions. Even in my last prediction video, I predicted pretty much the same thing that I predicted that would happen in the previous episode. So, uh, again, with that, I'm going to be coming up with specific scenarios going based off what we have content-wise with this one. And some are going to be outlandish, some are going to be kind of more probably closer to hone in on what could happen with Mushuku Tensei, if that makes sense. Nope. It's, it's Peak Fiction Sunday. It's Peak Fiction Sunday, episode 15. I think I know who's going to show up in this episode, hopefully, fingers crossed. But anyway, without further ado, I'm about to have enough today's episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe button, join the Rose Guild today. Without further ado, I said it twice. Let's get into it. It's a courier? Yeah. It's a letter. Is it from Paul, maybe? Because they've been they've been responding to each other. Okay, it is from Paul. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got an update here. We have an update. It's so good hearing his VA again speak. They're in Eastport now. And they're about to cross over, so they're down south, or they're about to head down south. Paul! Paul! Oh, good. It's so good to see you. And this is the group we got. Hold on. So we have uh, Roxy, his party. Lily is going down there, and then I forgot the dwarf's name. Tormund? No, no. Yeah, that's definitely Richard. So it's not going to be an unexpected surprise. Paul's informing him that he sh he's sending Aisha and Norn up there with Rejard. I see. Okay. So yeah. So Rudius is just going to kind of play the role of just looking after the two. Oh, come on, Rudius. You, you didn't get the hint? He must say, oh, come on, okay, it's fine. We'll, 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 oh, we gotta skip the opening. Oh, boy. <laughs> so every time he makes that face and says I'm doing I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he puts ex neat. He's got to specify that. Like he's no longer neat. Uh, I think it was Rock Bullet. Oh no, Disturb. That's right. He canceled her magic. Wow. I think there was actually an explanation for this because you need to know the essentially how the human body heals itself, right? You need to have that knowledge. And Rudius doesn't have that knowledge prior. I think that was the reason, the reason behind it. They're probably they're definitely gonna have kids, aren't they? Oh, maybe not. Probably reduced from that statement, yeah. It's the right answer, Rudius. It's the right answer. Now she's working on 
drawing magic circles to get back to essentially Earth. So, yeah, summoning magic, which is forbidden magic. Ah, that's, that's, a, that's a good explanation about it. If you don't understand something, mana is the, probably the answer for it. Oh, it doesn't work. She's gonna get an idea of inspiration, is she? Maybe not. Never mind. Maybe not. Oh, so she was just like trying to get her mind back on Did they explain what they're trying to summon at least for right now? They're just trying to get, I think, a basis of teleportation magic. Oh, she's so oh, okay. I like that they're showing this side of things though. Like, you know, if you get say East Kai to another world, most time every every character's been excited about it. In this case, Nanahoshi wants to get back badly. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm glad we finally get to see some Julie and Rudius interaction because we really haven't seen too much of it. I'm still trying to figure out what role she's really going to play later on in the story. She probably hasn't been eating. Probably hasn't slept in days. Pent up anxiety, exactly. It's probably just accumulation of things that she's been through, and it eventually it's just broke. Oh no. Now that I notice it, they're, they're, they're detailing it more. And Julie did say something prior. Bad memories. It's probably of his past life. Or maybe it was when he was experiencing in Core 1. And he can relate to that with Nanahoshi. Yeah. And then sold that was there for him. <laughs> Zenova, man. Even my favorite so far this episode. I was expecting an episode just of a, a pure, you know, uplifting enjoyment when I saw her read your Aisha and Norn again, but this is. It's depressing. I mean, it, it really is. She's given up on the fact of ever going home. 
Oh, he's consulting. Yep, smart. I'd say most likely Cliff could maybe be the most help here with this. I provide insight, but I have no idea how to solve the solution. A compound design? Did he just figure this out? Zenobo, you, if, if, you, if you figure this out, Zenobo, you are the true MVP of this episode. Oh yeah, that's the doll. So it's composed of a giant magic circle, which is how it functions? <laughs> Never would I have ever pre projected that to be a possibility. But here we go, Mushuku Tensei it is. That's crazy. That's absolutely just crazy. So they're overlapping the magical circles. Using the knowledge they found in the book from the doll. And this is where Nanahoshi is going to get her inspiration from. It might work. It might work! Yes. Let's go with the multidimensional theory. Let's do it. The multiverse. Bring it on. It's amazing how someone's moods can improve when they hit a corner in their life and they think it's just impossible to get out of it. And then when you see something like this, it's just like, just like that. A shift of, just a change. I like the OST in the background for this. Very uplifting now. The tone of the episodes changed immeasurably. Nanahoshi was only thinking about one circle to draw, never having multiple and stacking them on top of each other. That's actually, it actually makes sense. It, it does make sense, actually. Here we go. It worked. Is that, that's a plastic water bottle. Is it not? No way. Wait, summon anything I want? Wouldn't that mean you, you, but you want to go home, right? You don't want to summon something. Huh. I like that. Is that foreshadowing, possibly? <laughs> Did Body Gotti join just for the heck of it? Yep. Of course. <laughs> so I was wrong. In the PV, they're celebrating two things Nanahoshi accomplishing her magic circles, and Rudius and Sophiette getting married. Look at Cliff shocked about Lindley's drinking. <laughs> Look at Julie. Freak, you know, it's, it's dwarves. Just dwarves. Yeah, I got some banging guitar music playing in the background. Nanahoshi's full of life now. This was a roller coaster, I'm telling you guys. That was a great episode. I That was... This isn't the ending that we got last time, is it? No, it's not. We got an end credit scene. We have an end credit scene repeat. So far, I'm gonna say this is my favorite episode of Core 2. Yeah, this is without a doubt my favorite episode so far of Core 2. Because I know we, we started her journey, well, we, we saw her in season one, but we started her journey of getting her backstory in Core 2, in Core 1. I think like episode eight, I believe was it? And then now fast forward to episode 15 and she can finally start toward the next phase of 
trying to go back home. Also, I love this song. I'm gonna. Oh, I need to find this later. Okay, what are they gonna show us, please? Wait, hold on. There, there he is. He's in the corner. <laughs> Oh, Norn got lost. She loses her way. She's directly challenged, huh? There it is. The reunion. But that's not all. Finally. And of course, you had to cut it off there, but at least we saw it. Yes! <laughs> next time, Norn and I show. Man, oh man, okay. I'm going to get to editing and then next for the predictions for this. Let's do it.